Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and this is my time to answer. This is the sort of official uh, answers portion of the q and I did the other day, and um, I just want to say, you know, sort of preface this by saying thank you to everyone who decided to take the time and ask a question, or two or three or ten, uh, <laughs> because a few of you did ask more than one, and um, I'm hoping this is going to be that much more fun for all of us. Uh, you know, I really thank you for participating and going above and beyond my expectations. So, uh, but let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first question up is from Bodhi of CI5. This is my good friend Bazvan on YouTube. And he says, I know that your first vid was for a competition, but what inspired you to produce more vids and on all the different topics? Excellent question. Um, you know, basically I was on YouTube for something like six months to a year before I made that first video. And uh, prior to that, I hadn't actually been online for quite a few years. But, um, you know, once I got back online and I stumbled onto YouTube, uh, a lot of that early time was just, you know, watching other people's videos and taking the time to comment. And uh, I started to grow a rapport with two cats specifically. One is I Just Subscribe Now, a.k.a. The Scribe, who was doing a lot of Doctor Who-related videos, um, you know, Doctor Who theories and uh you know, comments and commentaries and that kind of thing, as well as scientific topics and socio-political topics that interested me. And, uh, you know, I started commenting on his videos and sort of grew a rapport with him. And uh, actually, soon thereafter, I stumbled onto, at the time, he was known as Mr. Nero Zero. But at the moment, he's got two channels. One is Mike Adam Smasher and one is Mike Aqua Magnus. And uh, I don't remember what some of his earliest videos were at this point. But I think I sort of stumbled onto him early in his video making career as well. And, um, you know, I just I really admired these two guys because basically what they did was turned on a camera and sat down and started talking about all this geeky stuff they loved. And, uh, you know, unabashedly so. And, I, you know, once I got over that initial anxiety of doing that first video for the competition, um, you know, basically it was like I had always contemplated the idea of if I wanted to be a successful writer, there'd be some level of having to have my face put out there. And YouTube came along, and I, I suddenly thought to myself, you know, this could be really fun. I could turn on a camera and talk about all these geeky things I love, uh, you know, upcoming news and comics and movies and all of this stuff. And, uh, you know, this would be something that I would be more in control of than just having my book out there with my face on it kind of thing. And so once I got over that hurdle of anxiety, it was like a whole new world opened up for me, and I, I just really got a kick out of it. Uh, and like I say, I was, I was really prompted sort of by watching these other cats and seeing what they were doing and digging it, and I thought, you know, I, maybe I could do that. And uh, in the time that I've been doing it, really, as far as covering all the different kind of things that I've done, I've just always wanted to experiment with it. Um, I never want to be set in one set of, uh, you know, parameters as far as what kind of videos I do. I started out making sort of, you know, commentary videos on things that I thought were interesting. Uh, then I went through a phase where I was talking about entertainment news, um, which has become more relegated to my Facebook page. And uh, then I started doing reviews and, and kind of wanting to hone that process. And in between all of that, every once in a while, I do these goofy off the top of my head things. Uh, you know, so that's basically what it's been about. It's been just sort of an experimental thing. And every time I want to do something new, there's a level of anxiety, kind of like that very first time. And uh, I just try to push through it. I just try to, you know, not question something. If I start to doubt it and I start to think maybe I shouldn't, maybe I'll look ridiculous or whatever, I just do it. I just push myself to get it done, uh, even to the point where... I'll try not thinking about something until after it's uploaded, and then I'll be like, well, there you go, too late. Uh, it's already up, and everyone can see it now. So, uh, But I'm always trying to kind of break the mold. I don't ever want to be set into any one you know, specific group of video type. And um, so that's basically been the thing from the very beginning. I, Like I say, I admired what these cats did, and uh, once I got past my own anxieties, I thought maybe I could do it, and I've just kept trudging along all that time. So... Uh, I hope that long <laughs> answer uh, does well to answer your question, and but that'll get us moving on to the next one. The next three questions comes from another good friend on YouTube, Viva Leto. Uh The first of which is, why do you wear sunglasses inside for any specific reason? <laughs> and, uh, well, frankly, no. Um, 
not really, uh, apart from the obvious, which is the uh, trademark with the chosen name Blues. But, um, you know, it, frankly, when I got started out with doing the whole Blues thing back when I was a teenager and actually doing sort of uh, what could loosely be called performances, um, and I say that because there was no band behind us, but it was much more than actual uh, you know, like karaoke type of stuff. I mean, we had the music, but we actually did full-on performances, uh, my friend and I at the time, and then later on another friend of mine. And, uh, you know, basically I started wearing sunglasses almost all the time, to the point where now sunlight is very sort of... Uh, it, my eyes struggle in, in that bright light. Um, do I wear them around indoors all the time? No. Uh, but there are certain days where I actually do have to wear them because the light through my window is so bright. And, uh, you know, as for why I wear them in my videos, well, and especially when I'm indoors, that's when I do most of my videos, uh, it's mostly a trademark thing. I mean, um, you know, that's what I'm known for. People rarely see me uh, without them, really. Um, I'm only ever without them when I'm sort of in my alone time at home. So... Uh, but, you know, that's, that's pretty much all there is to say about that. Uh, the next question is, favorite childhood movie? Hmm. All right, well, not favorite movie overall, obviously. Uh, favorite movie as a kid, let me think. Um, phew. I don't know, that's a good question. Uh, I'll go with my earliest movie memory, basically, um, which was Star Wars. Uh, I actually really was really just sucked in by the whole Star Wars thing. Um, I mentioned in my Wicked Flicks talking about the 1989 Batman that I wore that tape out to the point where my parents had to conveniently, air quotes, lose it uh, because they were so sick of hearing it over and over and over again. And the first thing that I ever actually did that with was a VHS copy of Star Wars. Um, I remember being a kid and insisting that my mother pretend she was Princess Leia and that I was Darth Vader and I had captured her and I was going to defeat Luke Skywalker <laughs> I was coming to save her who ended up being our German Shepherd <laughs> no offense Mark Hamill but uh <laughs> basically that's my that's one of my earliest memories of as far as film films go and uh just happens to be a geeky movie of sorts that uh was really the first thing I latched on to so um, I don't know necessarily that was my favorite as a kid, but uh, it's definitely up there. So uh, the third question is, what person do you want to meet the most and why? <sighs> Living or dead? Um, that That's the first thing I think of. Uh, let's see. There's probably a few. Um, you know, right now, probably dead, I'd be somewhere between Bradley Knoll from Sublime and maybe John Belushi. Um, I think those are about the, the top two that I can think of. As far as living, wow, I, I really don't know. Um, maybe Stan Lee. I'll, I'll say Stan Lee. Uh, because here's a cat who, you know, even though I'm much more of a DC Comics guy, I still recognize the great creation, the, the list of creations, really, that Stan Lee has given this world. I mean... Uh, I, I need not go through the list. You must know them by now. Um, even if you're not a comic book fan, whoever you are listening to this, I'm sure you know what his legacy is. And, uh, I, you know, from interviews I've seen and stuff like that, he seems like a really genuine, uh, down-to-earth and genial type of cat. And, um, man, I would just like to sit down and talk to him for an hour, you know. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it for Viva Ladell's questions, and I thank you for asking so it's pretty good ones. Um, and so moving on, we have uh, a couple questions from Mike Aquamagnus, who I mentioned previously as being one of the one of the cats that really inspired me to start making videos. And uh, his first question is, what was the first movie you remember seeing as a kid? <laughs> I, I guess I kind of touched on this already um, as far as Star Wars. Um, but sort of an offshoot memory to that. Um, one of my earliest memories, apart from actual the actual movie Star Wars, um, was a night that my grandparents were actually taking me to see The Empire Strikes Back. I think it was The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, it was either that or Return of the Jedi, but I'm almost positive it was Empire. And uh, I just remember, because I had, I had just fallen so much in love with Star Wars, I didn't even really understand it being that young. 
but I loved the quirky C-3PO and R2-D2. I loved the, even though I couldn't put my finger on it being that young, the menace of Darth Vader. And um, I had this really great vivid memory, and I don't really remember if this was before seeing the film or after seeing the film, but uh, it was while I was still a child and we lived in Jersey. And there's certain areas of Jersey that have a lot of hills and mountains and stuff. And uh, I remember being in the back of their car, going down one of this like really steep uh, hills in a sort of city setting at night. And we had either just come from the movie or we were just going to see the movie. And uh, I remember sitting in the back seat, looking out the you know the windshield, and just imagining myself flying in a in an X-wing fighter or a Tie fighter or something like that, because it really I mean that whole Star Wars trilogy thing was pretty much one of the most paramount things, you know, to inspire me, and uh, to really just, I got sucked in by it, I mean, I, I still have the pillowcase I had as a, uh, you know, two and three year old with the Star Wars cast of characters on it, and uh, some of my earliest pictures, I'm wearing Star Wars t-shirts and stuff like that, so uh, that's definitely where it, where it began, my earliest memories are to do with Star Wars primarily. So, um, second question, uh, what got you into comics and superheroes growing up? Um, well, kind of, kind of similarly to that, uh, it was like cartoons and stuff. Um, you know, s things like Super Friends and, uh, Spider-Man and his amazing friends. I think those were the big two, really, uh, that got me into superheroes and stuff. That actually, and, um, reruns of the 60s Batman series with Adam West and Burt Ward, uh, even though, again, like I say, because I was so young, I didn't understand all these things really. Uh, you know, when when you get older, you kind of have a more mature outlook on them. And uh, while I don't really watch them all that much anymore, uh, although with the 60s Batman series, I definitely would if I could get my hands on a DVD of it, if they'll ever release one. But, um, no, you know, I, the two characters that really vied for my interest in superheroes, very, like, the earliest ones, were definitely Superman and Spider-Man, and uh, basically because of those two cartoons. And, you know, like I say, Batman followed. I really, I think, uh, as far as supervillains goes, it was the Joker that landed my interest first. And in all honesty, I didn't really start to connect the dots that, hey, these are characters from comic books until, like, middle to late 80s, I guess, and only really loosely um, did I actually, you know, pick any up. I'd say somewhere between, like, 1989 to 1994-ish was uh, when I was really buying comics more so and reading them, um, and yet still not as much as I am today, even. Uh, you know, a lot of them ended up just being for collection purposes and stuff. But, uh, yeah, as far as earliest inspiration goes, it's definitely sort of a cross between the Super Friends cartoon and uh, Spider-Man and his amazing friends. And like I said, I think they were, again, the first two action figures I even owned because of how much I fell in love with them. So um, the third question, uh, a Mike Adam Smasher question, because uh, his secondary channel is a lot more to do with film scores and composers and stuff, which is really great stuff. Uh, he asks, what would you consider your favorite film score to be, or scores? Um, <laughs> wow. Whew, um, let, me, let me default answer this by saying probably uh, any one of the Star Trek film scores, uh, because I don't actually own any. That's, that's the biggest criminal thing. Most of them I've heard like online, or I have like sampler cassettes and stuff like that. I don't really actually own any full-on film scores, um, unless we're counting soundtracks where there's some score work as well as some, uh, y you know, like rock and music and stuff like that, because the two earliest I ever bought were Back to the Future and Ghostbusters, and both of those soundtracks feature score work as well as sort of, you know, more modern pop songs and uh, pop culture music and things like that. And um, I'm looking at the clock right now, and it's nearing 15 minutes, and uh, so I guess I'm going to have to break this into multiple parts. Um, so definitely stay tuned. If I have not answered your question yet, be sure to check out the next part. And if I have, stay tuned and see what else I have to say. So, uh, you know, I'm going to start a new recording, and I hope you'll stick with me. So I'll catch you later. Peace.